my name is Michael Sommerhalder. I'm coach of the team Mind Factory, and I myself um, participated a few years ago and started with First Lego League in 2008. I was a team member for three years, and afterwards I was so excited by the First Lego League that I thought it would be nice to uh, start coaching my own team, which I did, and this is right now my fifth season as a coach. First of all, the teamwork is one of the three main categories in the first Lego League, beside the robot game and the research. I would not call the teamwork a category, it's more like the framework in which um, the robot game and the research are embedded. What I experienced was that when the team really understood what it means to work together as a team and to really have this team spirit, then the result in the other two categories, in the robot game and the research, suddenly increased. The goal of my coaching is to, to help the team get those extra results by working together. And the most important part, and that's what I mostly liked for the first Lego League as a participant, is that it's not like in school, where you come to school and you open your books and after the hour is, is, is over, you close the book again and go home, something like this. So what, what I experienced was that First Lego League is, is really not like that. It's more like an idea that, that uh, starts working in your life. It's very inspirational and what I realized was that work and fun could be merged together in First Lego League and they could actually mean the same. And I think that's something that uh, we as coaches should tell the kids and should try to get to the kids and such that they can experience the same. Because it's something that, for example, later when they have to choose a job or something, they have to work in a team. And if they can merge fun and, and uh, the work, then that's something really exciting. And then they also can score very, very, very well at the end. So what do I do in order to, uh, for the team to, to get to this point? I try to let the team reflect their current work in the trainings. So what they do is like they have uh, finished a, for example, the research presentation and they try to go on with their work. I try to help them uh, reflect their work and try to help them uh, figuring out what they could improve or what is, what is not done already, such that in a future point they can do this by themselves and they try to learn to do this by, them, by themselves, such that the team can improve itself which is uh, basically the goal of this. In our team, we have very different characters uh, of, of people. Uh, so for example, this year, a team member joined who loves experimenting with everything he finds around himself, and which is very nice, but well, could also be very annoying sometimes. However, uh, it is important that in the team, his skills can be implemented and this is what we did, for example. So right now he is in the research part and he's actually doing experiment, experiments there where he can really experience his passion. And that's, that's something very important because then he gets very motivated and starts to work even more and that leads to a very, very um, good results at the end. However, it is not always easy to have such diversity in the team. Uh, you can imagine if you have a lot of team members with very different interests and uh, skills. This could lead to some problems. And there it is very important as a coach to help the team, uh, to respect each other and to really accept those uh, passions and those skills um, in order to, at the end, work together. And this is what I'm doing with this uh, reflection time, where the team members can talk to each other, talk what they did what they did good, what they did not so good, and how they could improve. And so the goal here is really that the team at the end gets combined to, to, a, to one unit. This is also why, for example, we have team t-shirts and a team name that does not change over the years. That's because then the team has like an inspiration for, for which they can work and for which they can bring their results. And it also, it merges them together and it brings them more together than they were before, which is very nice. And something that I um, experienced with other teams is that over the years, when team members participate at the FLL for multiple years, they start getting older and once they are like 16 or 17, they cannot participate anymore. And the problem is that 
um, if the team does not have younger, younger kids in there who can learn from the older ones, then suddenly those, the, this knowledge of, and this team spirit gets lost, which is not so good. Um, in order to prevent this, what we do is we always have um, kids of different ages, from 9 to 16, such that the younger ones can learn from the older ones. And what we experienced is that the older ones also can learn from the younger ones, so that's nice too. And therefore it's like the, the knowledge in the team, about the teamwork and also the team spirit uh, keeps being alive over the FLL generations. I now want to give some tips for the championship. So when, when teams come to the championship and go to the teamwork, it is mostly in a, in a um, room which is not available for the public, where they have to answer questions from the judges. And there it is very important that the team is, is uh, open for these questions, that they do not hesitate to answer them, and they can also bring a lot of experience that they had during their training phase or also at, at other competitions maybe. There it is really important for the team that they tell the judges what they know, what they experienced and most importantly what they learned. Uh, there's also a evaluation sheet on the website of Hands-On Technology where you can look at the points that the judges may ask and where you can also prepare a little bit to see in which direction the judges will, uh, will ask the questions. During the competition, it may happen that, for example, your robot does not drive as you want it to, or maybe a kid uh, doesn't remember a text, which, um, for example, happened last year at our presentation because they had to learn the English, which was uh, very difficult. Uh, don't worry and make the team clear that the most important thing that they learned is not what the robot or the presentation actually shows to the judges, but it's more what the kids themselves learned during those years. Because what I experienced is that later on, when they are looking for jobs, etc., they see those things again, and then they are, they are already experienced, which is very practical. I wish you all the best at the competitions, have fun and keep on learning. Thanks.